One of the interesting points you made recently, Tame, is that the whole idea of the intelligence explosion is mistaken or misleading. Why don't you explain what you were talking about there? Yeah, I think it's not a very useful concept. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like calling the Industrial Revolution a horsepower explosion. Like, sure, during the Industrial Revolution, we saw this drastic acceleration in raw physical power, but there are many other things that were maybe equally important in explaining the acceleration of growth and technological change that we saw during the Industrial Revolution. What is a way to characterize the broader set of things that the horsepower perspective would miss about the Industrial Revolution? So I think in the case of the Industrial Revolution, it was a bunch of these complementary changes to many different sectors in the economy. So you had agriculture, you had transportation, you had law and finance, you had urbanization and moving from rural areas into, into cities. Um, there were just many different innovations that mm. kind of, you know, happened simultaneously that gave rise to this um, change in the, the way of economically organizing our society. It wasn't just that we had a more horsepower. That I mean, that was part of it, but that's not the kind of central thing to focus on when thinking about the Industrial Revolution. And I think similarly for the development of AI, sure, we'll get like a lot of very smart AI systems, but that will be one part among very many hmm. different moving parts that explain you know, why we expect to get this transition and this acceleration and growth and technological change. Yeah. I, I want to better understand how you think about that broader transformation. Um, before we do, the other really interesting part of your worldview is that you have longer timelines to get to AGI than most of the people in San Francisco who think about AI. Um, when do you expect a drop in remote worker replacement? Yeah, maybe for me that would be around like 2045 or... Wow. Wait, and you? I'm a little bit more bullish. I mean, it depends what you mean by drop in remote worker and whether it's able to do like literally everything that can be done remotely or... Do yeah. most things. I'm saying literally everything. For literally everything, yeah. I just shade, I guess, predictions by five years or like mm. by 20% or something. Why? Because we've seen so much progress over even the last few years. Mm -hmm. yep. We've gone from Chad GBT like two years ago to now we have models that can literally do reasoning, can, are better coders than me. Um, and I, I studied software engineering in college. I mean, I did become a podcaster. I'm not saying I'm like the best coder <laughs> in the world. <laughs> but... Um, if you made this much progress in the last two years, why would it take another 30 to get to full automation of um, human brains? Right. Wait, so, I, I said that wrong. You know what I'm saying? Full, full automation of remote work. Yeah, yeah. So I think that a lot of people have this intuition that progress has been very fast. They like, oh, like just look at the trend lines and just like extrapolate, like obviously it's going to happen in like, I don't know, 2027 or 2030 or whatever. They're just very bullish. And obviously that's not a thing you can literally do it. Like there, there isn't like a trend you can literally extrapolate of when do we get to full automation? Because if you look at the fraction of the economy that is actually automated, it's very, like by AI, it's very small. Mm. So if you just extrapolate that trend, which is something, say, Robin Hanson likes to do, you're going to say, well, it's going to take centuries or something. Now, we don't agree with that view. Uh, but I think one way of thinking about this is like um, how many like big things are there, how many core capabilities, competences are there that the AI systems need to be good at in order to have this very broad economic impact, maybe 10x acceleration and growth or something. How many things have you gotten, like how over the past uh, 10 years, 15 years? And uh, we also have this compute centric. So uh, just view. to double click on that, I mean, I, I think what Egg is referring to is like, if you look at the past 10 years of AI progress, um, we've gone through about, nine or 10 orders of magnitude of compute, and we yeah. got various capabilities that were unlocked. So you had in the, you know, uh, in the early period, people were kind of, um, you know, solving gameplay on, on specific games, on very complex games. And, um, you know, that happened 2015 to maybe 2020, and uh, Go and chess and Dota and, and, uh, and other games. And then, and then you had maybe, um, you know, uh, sophisticated language uh, capabilities that were unlocked with these large language models um, and maybe kind of advanced abstract reasoning yeah. and, and, and coding and, and maybe math. That was maybe another big such capability that got unlocked. And so you know, maybe there are a couple of these big unlocks that happened over the past 10 years. Yeah. Um, but it takes, you know, that that happened on, on the order of once every three years or so, or maybe one every three orders of magnitude of compute scaling. Um, 
And so, and then you might ask the question, how many more such competencies might we need to unlock in order to be able to have a, a, an AI system that can match the capabilities of humans across the board, maybe mm -hmm. specifically just on remote work tasks. And so then you might ask, well, maybe you need kind of coherence over very long horizons, or you need kind of agency and autonomy, or maybe you need um, multimodal, multimodal kind of full multimodal kind of understanding, just like a human would. And then you, you ask the question, okay, how long might, might that take? And, and so you can think about, well, just in terms of calendar years, it, you know, the, the previous unlocks took about, you know, you get one every three years or so. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, that previous period uh, coincided with this rapid scale up of the amount of compute that we use for training. So we went through maybe nine or 10 orders of magnitude since AlexNet, you know, compared to the biggest models we have today. And, you know, we're, we're getting to a level where it's becoming harder and harder to scale up compute. And, you know, we've done some extrapolations and some analysis looking at specific constraints like energy or GPU production. And based on that, it looks like we might have maybe three or four orders of magnitude of scaling left. And then you're really spending a pretty sizable fraction or a non-trivial fraction of world output on just building up data centers, energy infrastructure, fabs. Which is already so like 2% of GDP, right? 